about the history of our state and the history of her tribe. And I can tell you, I learned so much from what she was saying on that day. And when I ran for state treasurer, I got to spend a day with Paulette. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about her heart. And so I am so happy that she is getting the response that she is around the state. And she needs all of our help. So today, I want to introduce Carol Robertson. Tom's probably around here somewhere, okay? Our hosts, thank you so much for opening your home to us all. And so, Carol. Thank you all for coming. We're very honored to have you here helping us entertain, listen to, support Paulette. If you look at the Wikipedia article on Paulette, it's quite long, and you find out that she's a populist. That's not news to us, I don't think. Uh, but she was for several, well, for a few years, she was the only Democrat from Northern Idaho. She was elected from a Republican area. Uh, and she got a basketball scholarship to go to WSU. No. <laughs> <laughs> but she went to University of Washington instead. <laughs> yes, she, I know you went to University of Washington, but I thought the basketball part was kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, so um, I looked around the internet a little bit, and there's all these websites finding out who her donors are. How, what organizations are supporting her and all this and that. But I looked and looked and there's, there's no place to find out what we are learning, is that we have a marvelous candidate in Paulette. And we are so lucky to have her with us tonight. Uh, I want you to welcome Idaho's rising star in the Democratic Party and maybe the nation's rising star. I guess you were on... Oh, I guess she was on <laughs> CNN. CN CNN last night? Yeah. Yes. She's getting she's getting around. So. so here's the real deal. Here's Paulette. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Let's thank Carol and Tom. This is their home. Yes. Good home. It's not always easy to open up your home to folks you don't know so well, neighbors you may not want always at your house and uh, digging around your, your drawers and your bookshelves, but thank you. <laughs> She's a good soul. Ah, just love Carol. Well, so we're excited to be here. We actually just flew in from the northern region and you know, we're just proud to be here. Uh, I have my staff who's uh, been with me on this campaign trail, which is a pretty hefty one because we get a lot of requests and we get a lot of support from all across this country. You know, people want us to be everywhere, but here in Idaho, it's more refreshing to see people on all sides of the aisle, both Republican and Democrat, Libertarian, Independent, and unaffiliated, asking for us to come out and speak to their groups, speak to their families and friends and their organizations. And for me, why that's refreshing is I'm seeing that my generation speaks very well to, to every other generation, that young and old, seeking real leadership. And it's not always that way, apparently. When I was running four years ago for the house seat that I sat in for my district, which is in North Idaho, Benoit, Laytaw counties, those districts up north, you know, they had a different kind of representation. And oftentimes you would hear in these debates how, you know, conservative people were, they're clamoring over one another to talk about how conservative they are, how Christian they are. <laughs> And I find that a little fascinating because I would think, well, what makes you truly a conservative? What truly makes you Christian? And above all, what really makes you Idahoan? Because these are not the definitions that I would presume of a true Christian, a true Idahoan, or a true conservative. So oftentimes I find myself very much alone in this political scene. 
I decided to run as a Democrat when I was asked to serve in this position of District 5. And I chose that because I looked at the Democratic Party at the time as the party of inclusivity. The Republican Party up in North Idaho was very much a fear-based organization. You know, they weren't about conservation of public lands. They weren't about conservation of clean air or clean water. They certainly weren't about conservation of true Idaho values when it comes down to what it means to be a family. And it was heartening to see that there were actually, there was a party that's still fighting for representation. Granted, there weren't a lot of Democrats. You know, and I, I walked into a space where there are very few Democrats. But these were people who reminded me of my grandparents who weren't any political party. My grandparents were farmers, humble people who just worked hard cultivating the land. And they didn't talk about political party systems. In fact, they never even talked politics. Whenever they did, it was always because it was a presidential election season. And my grandparents were very Catholic, so of course they talked about JFK and, you know, and others who had the same lean. But honestly, these folks were just simple people who loved their neighbors, really looked out for each other, and above and beyond everything else, they were compassionate about people, about all of humanity. And so my upbringing are these two people in my life, these grandparents of mine. You know, they're the most beautiful people I can really recall and think back on when it comes down to any decision I make from here on out. Because as I was running for this house seat, you know, I was reminding people what that means to me to be an Idahoan. So I wasn't talking about this partisanship of being a Republican or a Democrat or independent. It was ultimately just being about the people. So when people ask me now, you know, how did she manage to be elected in North Idaho in a very red county? And, you know, there's a lot of battles up north with the, the Aryan nation, the, the people waving their Confederate flags oddly and wishing to be Russian over American. I thought, these are some interesting folks. They're certainly not Idahoan. Most of them emigrated here from California or somewhere in the south, you know, Mississippi, Georgia. And they come here pretending to be real Idahoans. And I would tell them, you're certainly not an Idahoan. I mean, I've been here for thousands of years. I don't know where you've been. But this is not the way we are. here this long, you know, we know what it's like to be a real Idahoan. You know, we fight for Idaho. We like the fact that we have a beautiful place to call home. People travel here in droves because they say they want to experience our mountains. Just flying over, I thought, God, how beautiful is Idaho. We have the most mountains in the country. We are still technically the frontier state in the lower 48. And yet, everything is under attack. We have a president who wants to sell off our lands, a governor who has already been doing that, a lieutenant governor who is just playing coy along the way. You know, we have so many puppets in this government system. It just, it's disturbing to me because I wonder why people constantly vote for them so blindly. Voting year after year, election after election for these fools who constantly lie to the people. These issues are very concerning to me because I have two young sons who I am defending day in and day out. When I came from home, I was looking at my son and I thought, I cannot fail this young man. He is nine years old as of yesterday. And the fact is, we have to fight as parents, grandparents. And if you're not a parent, you're still fighting for Idaho's children because we have people who are in the state house, who are elected even across the country, who are constantly attacking our children's future. And so I, that's really what gets me out every day. But the fire continues to burn brighter and brighter. Every day I read more about how we're striking at refugees, how we're striking at our working population are people who are poor and poorer, who can't afford health care, who can barely afford education. 
our children who, this day and age, they don't have the best and the brightest. You know, I had everything. I had teachers who cared, who were paid better, had more rights. You know, this is why this is one of my platform pieces today. But the fact that we have to fight for this is wrong. Why are teachers at the bottom of this country? I was just reading in the New York Times today how teachers are being politicized today. This is how far off the cliff we've fallen. Idaho, in fact, has served as the worst. We are 50th in the country when it comes to how we treat our teachers. We have kicked them, not only to the curb, but to the ditch. They're not just laying on the side of the road, they are in the ditch because we, we cannot even pay them adequately. They have very little rights in this state. But what does that mean for our children and our future if we can't even teach our, treat our teachers right? So I have a problem with that. So we're not only running for governor because we're trying to fight for our children and our teachers and our public land and our environment. We have so much at stake here in Idaho. And every time I look at young people, I am just reminded how imperative it is that we get up and fight. And sometimes it's gonna come down to a brawl. This time it is. It is our love army versus the corporatists. And unfortunately, these folks who have not come over yet, because there are, there are a lot of Republicans who have come over because they see that they have truly now a representative of the people who also defends their rights whether they're gun-loving Idahoans. I'm a gun owner. I value the Second Amendment, as do my children and my relatives. If you're Republican and that's your one issue, come on over. <laughs> come on over. Okay. There are a lot of folks here that want to create this divide, but I have to remind them that you have been lied to. For three decades, our people in Idaho have been lied to. They've been lied to when it comes down to defending their rights, to independence and autonomy, local control, smaller government, less taxes. Because guess what? Since then, taxes have been raised on the working poor. Your rights to health care have been stricken away. Your rights to affordable housing are no longer you're competing with the outer few who've come into Idaho, buying up public land, privatizing it, extracting its resources, polluting our water system, polluting our air, polluting our ecosystem entirely, and unfortunately have left nothing for any of you and our kids and their kids to survive on. But these are the things that my grandparents, who are literally chiefs of this region, they kept this land pure, pristine, beautiful, for people to inherit and enjoy. And now these other folks are destroying it. So damn right I gotta get up and do something about it. So you're not gonna hear this political ploy. I'm not making any kind of speech today in terms of a campaign. This is me as a mother, as someone who inherited this land, inherited Idaho, asking all of you to help me fight because it is my responsibility. And if you're here in Idaho, this is your responsibility because you're gonna have to get more people out to vote because Idaho, again, is not a Republican state. I will repeat that because everybody needs to remember this. It is not a Republican state. Idaho is an independent state. It is not Democrat, not Republican, not Libertarian. I keep reminding people this because I'm looking at the generations before me, the elders who raised me, these good folks, believe in all of us, but they also believe 
that the future, when they unite under a real love, under integrity, under transparency in our government, that they know works for them if the people fight to make it work for them. They believe that this will not only help all of us in humanity, but it will help the state and the country because they were the ones who were the original crafters of the Constitution, who truly believe in this pursuit of happiness that was a new concept to these earlier folks who came through. Nobody really understood that, the real notion of the Constitution. And I said, well, this is not a system that should have been broken up into all these parties. This is what divides. And you're seeing right now the worst of the worst. I mean, we've hit rock bottom in this president. This divide where people hate each other. I've never seen that before. I'm 38. I may look much younger, but I'm 38. <laughs> I voted in quite a few elections. But I've never seen this kind of hate. It's ugly. It's intolerable. People threatening lives, threatening to hurt each other. You know, it's despicable. But I don't want my children or our children to experience any of this. I would rather take the arrows or the bullets than them. So we have to be serious about this election because it's a very small window. I take this path very seriously. Some people, they kind of say, well, she's a woman. You know, Idaho's never had a woman being governor. I don't know what they're missing. <laughs> I always find it fascinating when that's the case. You guys say, well, I come from a long line of women chiefs, and they know how to lead. And thank God they raised me. Because Idaho needs a real leader, a real chief, to actually help the people listen to their concerns and provide a true pathway forward. That is sincere, that is honest, but has solutions that are abroad for everybody. That can happen. We do deserve good things. I promise you that. But we gotta, again, we gotta get out there. And we came all this way because not only do we have great hosts who have attracted us here and said, come meet our people, come meet our neighbors and friends, but we have a message to share. We are up against corporations, special interest groups, liars and thieves, the Second Amendment Alliance group had a rally the other day in Boise, Idaho. They are saying every Democrat wants to take your guns away. I thought, excuse me, oh, okay. I didn't realize I was trying to take anyone's guns away. If that's the case, my brothers are not gonna be very happy with me because they happen to own assault rifles and I know they're veterans and they certainly wouldn't like that. But as a CCW licensed carrier, I wouldn't like that. And I don't like the corporations coming in here expecting us to subsidize them through corporate welfare. As a businesswoman, that is irresponsible business practice. This is why I like integrity in government and in business. So we're gonna uphold everything that we need to do. We're gonna rightfully turn this ship around. But we gotta talk to everybody. You know, we can't shy away from those folks who have said, I'm always going to be Republican. You could say, okay, that's all right. You can be an R, whatever makes you happy. Because if that makes you feel safe at night, then so be it. But voting against your own interest, voting against your values, or voting for someone who has certainly been fooling you for these many years, you're only hurting yourself. Don't do that anymore. Don't let them hurt themselves. This is the tragedy in Idaho. But the greater tragedy is those of us who are not voting. And there are a far greater amount of our population not turning out to vote. We know those folks, don't we? Yes. Oh, I certainly do. When I ran four years ago, I found out half of my brothers, or my mom's brothers and sisters, did not vote. 
They are rural Idaho. I will tell you when I was running, they were so proud of me, but they don't take the time to get out to vote. And they always said, well, she's a shoe-in. I mean, of course she's gonna win. And I, I talked to my uncle about this and I said, uncle, you know, this is very important that you vote. Even if it's just one vote, because there are elections in Idaho that are won and lost by one or five votes, literally. And I've seen those elections so close, they're heartbreaking. But my uncle, he's like a lot of us here in Idaho. You know, we take our government for granted. We often think that the richer are always going to win. The evils will always have their way. And it's a turnoff. Sometimes people say, well, the worst person I could ever imagine running for office is running, so why should I vote? How is that going to help? I see younger generations say this. Why does my vote matter? How would that make a difference? But our young people, they are smart. They're waking up and they're saying, not only am I going to vote this time, sometimes some of these folks are first time voters and they're excited for once. And they're helping out in this campaign and they're activating. But now we have everybody else who's been turned off, tuned out, because they've been ignored and overlooked, these folks, we have to get to vote. Now I know here in Twin Falls, we have a good population of people who are completely ignored. These folks work for the dairy farms down the road. They're harvesting sugar beets. These folks are our neighbors, friends relatives that we love and we want to make sure that they're just as secure as we are but if they don't have the time or the security to vote they're not going to vote and yet these are second third fourth generation idahoans who have stemmed from immigrants like many of us and yet they don't have this culture of voting there's a fear i've seen this fear but there's also this disconnection because I've had to create this culture of voting even within my own family. When I found out that there was a grandmother, an elder in my community who's never voted in their life and she was 80 years old, I made sure to get her registered, take her to the polls myself. She had a great experience. It was like going to the post office and picking up your mail. When you're 80, you love that. There's a, there's a lot of human interaction in that. So she had a great time. But it was sad to me to know that people don't have this practice. You know, and it's a process. And it's intimidating to go to the polls and vote, to register, get to the courthouse. So I'm sharing this story because I find it imperative that we understand how it's like outside of this fence. There are so many people in Idaho who don't share the same practice. But I'll tell you, four years ago, excuse me, six years ago when it started out, when my uncle did not turn out, it's because he's, he's kind of a recluse. He just likes to stay home, he's retired, he doesn't like to, to get out and do much. If anything, he'd get out to hunt and that's it. And then he goes back home. And since that moment when I, I asked him, because I, I can tell on the rolls, and of course, everyone called him out in the family and they said, oh yeah, Uncle Francis, he did not vote. <laughs> yeah, he got heck for it. But he's voted ever since because we made it a practice for him. We registered him and then we took him to the polls. Some folks, you gotta just go on with them. Let them know that it's all right. I mean, I, I tell you, I watched people for the first time vote. It's intimidating, it's not easy. But we got to make sure that no one in Idaho is intimidated when they get to those polls. Remind them that they need to register first. These are very simple processes that people don't understand or don't quite know what it takes to get there from point A to point B to C. But this is how we win in Idaho because it's a simple process. You get our folks registered. And I want you guys, you guys go to the market you go to the market and you turn to your neighbor and say, are you registered to vote? 
That should be your first line. It's not hello, how you, how's your day going? It should be have you registered to vote? <laughs> we should carry some cards with us because we need to make sure everybody's registered. Once they're registered, then we gotta make sure our people vote. Because the only reason why we've been losing in all of these election cycles, and I mean we, like we the people, not we the corporations, or we the special interest groups. I'm saying we the people. The reason why we have been losing and why we're 50th in the nation when it comes to every dingle, <laughs> every single facet of our lives, from healthcare to education to our teachers, to public lands, climate, everything, is because our people are not turning out to vote. It's not because they're voting Republican or Democrat. They're just not showing up. That's it. We gotta get our people to fight back with their votes. And remember, we may be up against $7 million with my opposition. We are a people-powered grassroots movement. Yeah, they have all the resources. They have the money for sure. They've been lying in their pockets for years. Some of these folks are legacy because they're wealthy millionaires. My opposition is that person. They think they own these seats. They also think they own the state house because no one challenged them. No one questioned it. No one fought back. When I seen this with my own eyes for four years in the state house, I said to myself, no more. When I watch people come to the state house and act like they are a guest in their own home, that they have to ask for permission to come in and testify or just to come into the state house to experience it for the first time. I said, no more. This state house is theirs. They have a right to come and testify on issues. These bills should reflect their values and their interests. This government should defend them and their way of life. And yet it's not. So from here on out, we say no more. We fight with our vote. And we make sure come November 6th, you elect a governor who truly represents the people. But you also help me elect everyone else down ticket. I know Deborah Silver, she's not here for nothing. <laughs> she's here to get elected. We have so many great people like Deborah Silver who need to help us all fight for our voices in the state house. Ensure we have representation at the local county commissioner's level, the city council, our mayor, everyone. Every seat counts, which is why your vote will make a tremendous difference. And heck, this race may come down to a few hundred votes. It may come down to 10 votes. But we're getting out there, and we're going to win. Woo -woo! And if it's by five votes, I'm going to say it's because of Carol and Twin Falls, it turned out. <laughs> she grabbed her neighbors and friends. Because imagine this. A few years ago, if we would have had 10 more people in every precinct turning out, we would have won some statewide seats. 10 more people. So let's not sit this one out. Promise me this. Everyone here, when you're registered to vote, I ask that you get 25 more people to register. Okay. This yes. may seem like a big goal. It's very realistic. Because I know all of you know at least 25 more people. Mm -hmm. What do they have to bring with them to register? Identification. Really, I mean, if you fill out the cards, you submit that, you just have to have your ID. And, and Driver's and license. And a, uh, proof that you live in your spot, like maybe a bill from the Idaho Tower or something like that. Well, now let's, okay, so we'll get to this they can register in their district, the county, fill out the card, send it to your county courthouse. You can go to the county courthouse, fill that information out with your ID. If you want to vote by absentee mail, you check the box to vote by mail. You wait for that ballot to come to you, fill it out. You can turn it to the courthouse or mail it in. There's that. Vote by mail. You can also register the same day of, and then you need your ID and a utility bill or some form of residency. Two forms. Bring that with you the day of November 6th. You can register the same day, vote the same day. That's unique here in Idaho. 
Many Ma people don't have that. We have that. Let's take advantage of it. Vote early. That's the third point. I wish you could vote much more often. But you can vote early. There's actually a window. For some counties, it's three, some two, but you can vote at your county courthouse early. That window's coming up soon. So as we get closer to October, I'm not sure if Deborah, would you have the exact date, Deborah? October 15th. October 15th. All right. So at the old hospital, County West, October 15th from 8 to 5. Monday through Friday. You can go and vote. And I tell you this, why I encourage it, because it does take a whole car weight off your shoulders if you go and vote early. Yes. Exactly. That's what we should be doing because we do have to create this. Go ahead, Art. Yes. IdahoVotes.gov. Yep. You can register online. So there's a lot of ways, but you got to remind people again. So they can register online. They can get their absentee ballot via that registration. But you got to remind people. Folks, they forget that they often get kicked out of the system and they're not registered to vote. And it's kind of a, it's a process the day of if you don't have all your information together. So it's easier to register early and then you can just go to the vote or vote early at the county courthouse. Question. I wanted to ask you, uh, I heard that there's a lot of national Republican money coming into the state mm -hmm. to oppose you. Yes. Yeah. And how much is coming in? Well, the more I talk about, you know, responsibility in government, they start throwing more money in my opponent's race. <laughs> so, they, I mean, honestly, the American Legislative Exchange Council runs our state in so many ways. They tend to, they have their hands in everyone's pockets. They own a lot of our representatives. And that's the problem with Idaho. You look at their legislation, and that's why it doesn't reflect local government. I mean, when the petroleum industry came through town because one of the, the towns here in Idaho wanted to ban plastic bags, they said, oh, no way. So they got one of their bills, and they had a representative present that bill. Had no real interest and understood why he was presenting this bill, but you're striking out local control. When the people don't want more plastic bags in their community for a reason, and the petroleum industry says, nope, we're going to force you to have plastic bags in our community, that's the American Legislative Exchange Council, made up of corporations from the petroleum industry like Exxon. Think of these, these high-end, uh, major billion-dollar corporations across the world. This is that organization. But they have a very strong hold on Idaho. And they are the ones who are powerful folks, individuals who are lining up to help my, my opponent in this race. So... Nothing that I'm worried about, because we have the people on our side. But people think, okay, well, there are going to be a lot of attack ads. Of course, that's kind of a given. That's what they do. Republicans like to do these smear campaigns. So the Republican Party has said to me, or my, uh, my folks in D.C. Uh, that I knew some friends of mine, and they said, well, if there's anything that they're worried about in this country, it's a Paula Jordan winning. Because... They see that we have a message that is far greater than theirs because we're aligning people on both sides of the aisle. We are truly the future. And if, when we change Idaho, they know we're flipping every red state because we are changing the face of America. So every Woo! red state will be no longer. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. We need to help. Yeah. Turn off your TVs, too. <laughs> it's going to be interesting, I think. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but there's a lot going on. Uh, we're fundraising on our own. We, we really just kind of push this, this homegrown status of people giving what they can. Uh, we've 
raised you know so much via online people giving forty dollars five dollars it's been great and what I love about it is we've had over twelve thousand probably thirteen thousand now thirteen thousand donors give to this campaign thirteen thousand people on average forty dollars per person and imagine if people gave that you know every month that they kept on a track you know this is why we're proving to the country that it no longer takes a wealthy millionaire billionaire to run in these races. You can be humble of the people raised by the people and running for the people to turn the face of this nation. And when we prove that, that's what they're afraid of. It no longer takes money to run the system. The people will truly have control again. That's what we're after. So, I'm here to take some questions. I know you all have a lot of great questions. And I'll let Carol be the MC. Okay. Questions? I'll help you fix 